gravity has to date been experienced by over 8 billion people globally. So the army decided to make a pilot literal, li, li, literal assault, which means that you get to your enemy as fast as possible. In my game, I have the exact same problem. If an enemy is over here and I'm here, but I'm out of bullets, then this happens. I'm dead. Most beginners start a game by moving simple. Like when I play Apex, for example, I mostly move forward in a straight line. And you might wanna move me. While pro player seems to move like they just took the biggest hit of pro. In fact, pro players sometimes give birth to an entire new genre, such as rocket jumping, which needs no introduction, but originally got popular from Quake and Team Fortress. So I wanted to have a rocket jump in my game, but without having to use a rocket launcher. So we decided to put rockets on our character's shoes instead. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? So in the last episode, you saw us create a game from the very start. And in this episode, we'll keep adding stuff to the game. First, we needed some basic fire particles to spawn under the boots. So now when we pick up the boots, we double jump, and that spawns the fire particles right here. Now to the hard part, adjusting height, speed, and power of these boots, while still maintaining some sort of integrity in the game. Way too high. I mean, for a Spider-Man game, yeah, sure, but it's not, so... No... This is starting to feel pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yes! Here's a game dev tip. Do not add features like this to late in development like I'm doing here. It's dumb. The reason why you want to lock your character movement early is because if you later add something as ridiculous as being able to rocket jump, you might break every level you designed to fit an earlier version of the game. As you can see here, this level was never intended for rocket boots. So pro tip, lock your movement early. In the current state of the game, our enemies are quite repetitive. We have a gunner, shotgunner, and rifle boy. They all look the same, and while defeating them is fun, seeing the same character around every corner is not so fun. So we're currently prototyping ways for enemies to randomly change appearance to avoid visual fatigue. Here, for example, you can see some variations being tested. However, we also need variation in gameplay, so currently we're looking for ideas on enemy encounters. For example, how about cyber dogs? The speed of those Resident Evil dogs? Or that Black Mirror episode still haunts me. Or how about flying droids? There is something about those Star Wars Jedi training bots that caught my attention. Or how about just a classic fat man? We all love those heavy dudes for some reason, especially if they're carrying a minigun. And once you combine a robot dog, flying droid, and a heavy boy, it will certainly force the player to move, which is a good thing. Time to add grenades. After adding a basic explosion to this green blob, we made sure the wall is also blocking the damage. Then it was time to do something about this thing. So I made a basic cylinder in Blender and some small tweaks to make it look like some sort of canister. And look, we have our first basic looking frag grenade. When testing it, we noticed a couple of strange things. This is a particular highlight. This guy is coming at us at a high speed. This guy simply falls over like he's fainting. And as soon as he lands, this guy puts his foot on top of him. Speaking of strange things, So combining the rocket boots and grenades, we're starting to get uh, some sort of gameplay. Let's talk about how to handle score and progression. In Risk of Rain 2, you had score up here, and each chest had a clear cost of score. We're prototyping to do something similar in our game, where throughout the map there are vending machines that cost score to open. And once you open them, you'll find health, weapons or items. 
if this turns out to be fun, we're starting to lean into the world of roguelikes, where each run could play a bit differently. We do not want to introduce those insane builds where your screen is like flashing all over the place, like you just won the jackpot on a casino, but introducing a bit of looting might not be a bad thing. 